At Chris Kaler Holistic, we demonstrate real healing and real caring to your health issues and needs. Our solution for you is an alternative to the alternative. Our out-of-the-box treatment methods are aimed to your specific well-being and are quite different than most. Venturing down the realm of quantum energy healing, Chris uses unique modalities of healing, such as spiritual intervention with pendulum dowsing, sacred geometry tools such as the neutralization, divinity, and sun ring. Another tool Chris uses is a five-tiered pyramid affectionately known as the Silver Light Pyramid to activate quantum activity within the body. Also, Chris Kaler Holistic uses radionic technologies in various platforms with specific liquid mineral ionics to balance out excesses and deficiencies within the body. At Chris Kaler Holistic, our goal is to get tangible and measurable results in the least amount of time possible so you can carry on with what's important in your life. Another advantage to this unique energy healing is that it can be done at a distance healing session so location is not a barrier and can be done conveniently at your home, office, just about anywhere through Skype or telephone conferencing. Eliminate costly protocols, expensive monthly supplements, high-priced allopathic operations, invasive surgeries, and dubious medication applications that keep you trapped in a financial and health rat race. Get a specific, customized, out-of-the-box solution tailored for your health recovery. At Chris Kaler Holistic, we are warm welcoming and want to put you at ease with your visit to us. Please visit www.chriskaler.net for further information as we welcome your questions and inquiries to starting this unique journey. At Chris Kaler Holistic, we want to show you that we are the alternative to the alternative and the out-of-the-box solution to customize an answer for you to spend less and gain more in your high-vibrancy journey. Visit www.chriskaler.net. Real healing and real caring to your health needs. for tonight chris kaler mr bob how is mr bob tonight uh mr bob is cool he's doing uh doing what he's got to do it's like 70 degrees out here today <laughs> oh be quiet it's I'm so- minus 18 in winnipeg it was celsius it was 28 though last week oh boy you know i mean really this is like crazy i mean if, if anybody's got like pains like what is that arthritis or something they're, they're yeah, like, the the change in barometric whoa. pressure will, will uh, raise nitrogen gas bubbles in your body and cause a bit of pain for sure. Killing people. Yeah, it's not nice. Spring is coming. That old groundhog saw his shadow and whatever you want to put into that. Tonight on the show is, as we say in Canada, part two. Our interview with Sergeant Daniel Brad McBolin III. He is a, an alien black op whistleblower. My hat goes off. My heart goes out. And my support is there for anybody who is considered a whistleblower who wants to put their neck out in order to help humanity. So we're going to bring him on in a few minutes. Update on energy. Today was, I don't know, Bob, if you felt it or not, but today was a a really different day of of energy, especially in the morning. It seemed like something was was really up. Seems, Seems like something was different. I don't know what you felt. It was a rush. It really was. I mean, it was like yeah. when I was out walking the dog and that this morning, I just felt like, I mean, you've got to figure out, I'm, I might be up 15 minutes before I go out with the dog. I feel like I had been out up for hours. I was just oh, so awake. Yeah, that's kind of what I felt in the office today, doing dowsing, working on clients was, it seemed like everything was elevated a little bit. We're mm. able to go a little deeper and find a few more things. The biggest thing I'm finding in the last few days of last week and early this week is is an energy or an entity called HOVA, H-O-V-A. I've been finding a lot of it. A HOVA is a spirit that has been enslaved, let's say, by the reptilians, by some artificial intelligence to go within your body and, and do some damage or do the dirty work of said reptilians and been releasing them like crazy out of people. And again, it's all about removing the negative energy to open the door to find out exactly what a person's health problem is. So that's been very helpful. 
And we've been doing a lot more work finding bovine fever within people. Oh. Oh, yeah, the mad cow disease. Swine fever and bovine fever both have been showing up that they're causing neurological problems. I worked with a lady in New Zealand, uh, a rare form of neurological disease, and we found that bovine fever within her, and she started noticing some changes pretty quick as we started moving it out. That's always exciting to see when we find some kind of new stressor and start moving it out of people. All of a sudden, start people start feeling a lot better. And it just makes life easier for everyone if we can be healthy, right? We need you out there doing this. Well, and there's only one of me. There are many who are buying the course, learning how to do this type of work. So far, we've got about 15 now. We just brought somebody new online. Mr. Eric Hypes is in the house taking the course and learning how to do this work. We want to get more people doing this work so we can create the big grid so we can have the energy flying all over the planet and and help people at a much deeper level. Let's bring on our guest, Sergeant Daniel Brad. Where are you, my friend? All present and accounted for, sir. <laughs> now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and, and call you my friend because you and I have been doing a lot of talking back and forth regarding certain issues that we're both very interested in. Things have been quite helpful. You know, we were talking on the weekend about pathogenic predatory funguses type of artificial intelligence and I have been finding it within people and moving it out and making some differences. So I need to thank you for that, my friend. Well, my friend, I consider you a friend back and thank you very much. And um, I believe with the, you're on the cutting edge of what is coming out uh, on a daily basis because uh, the PPAI, although inorganic in form, um, does have used CERN, uh, the looking glass called ALICE, uh, to look back and forth, and they are still attempting to get ALICE back up and running properly so that they can look back in time and forward in time and see what, uh, what PPAI needs to do. And uh, as a result of the inability for CERN to utilize uh, CERN proper with signals broadcast to Brookhaven uh, Laboratories, uh, Fermi Labs in Brookhaven, uh, New York, Long Island, um, Alice has not been doing her job. Uh, she's not up and running as efficiently as the PPAI had projected. And as a result of there are secondary programs that you bring out, one called Smart Dust. Smart Dust is what is delivering this bovine uh, type of uh, material. The bovine material itself is simply uh, like a package. It's sort of like a suitcase. You can put all kinds of stuff, all kinds of maladies inside a suitcase and deliver it. Well, a virus is like a suitcase. You can put multiple symptomatic um, programs within this virus. You deliver the virus, and it looks like it's all over the place. And um, the HOVA that you had brought up is very, very interesting, that, um, that it's attacking various particular parts of the body, such as the GI tract. Um, I've experienced this myself. To my complete dismay of, as to why things that um, I am eating are not um, digesting properly, nothing's happening the way it should happen, and um, I think you just gave me the answer uh, as far as the, uh, the bovine smart dusting, the HOVA smart dusting, um, and these are only, i, I got to remind you that these are secondary situations that are implemented by PPAI because it's losing the battle. Um, I'm, I have a um, YouTube channel now under that name, Daniel Brad McBullen III, and which I am monitoring uh, NASA satellites and also the allskycam.com directory and which I actually go and take a look, and I've seen some amazing things, and you can go to 
my YouTube channel and take a look at it and see that uh, the fighting has started in a major way as far as what I call D-Day. Star Wars actual D-Day. And um, I don't know what, uh, how many hours. Uh, yesterday, the we were 242.5 hours at the time that I broadcast. Uh, and the, the amazing thing, within 24 hours, I've been hit with something that wouldn't allow me to uh, wake up. Normally, I sleep anywhere from four, sometimes two, four, six hours a day. And the um, day before yesterday, I couldn't wake up till 4 p.m., like 16 hours worth of sleep I didn't need, didn't want. And today it was more like along the lines of uh, 12 hours of sleep that I did not need or want uh, with uh, digestive problems that were totally confusing to me at that point. And so, yeah, I believe that uh, with the violence of the war that is that's taking place since February 8th, and you can see I have like, I believe I have like uh, 13 videos posted and you can actually see it go from zero to a uh, thousand miles an hour. Uh, you know, the violence has just become, especially right around the earth, the violence has become just undescribable. Now, on the Lasco C2 and C3 satellite, on the video, I've seen some pictures that you've posted, you sent me. One even looks like a huge planet, almost like the Death Star that is around the sun. Right. I thought that that was a blue kachina, and I reported it as such. And when in actuality, it's it's a, a bunch of other guys. It's basically the Plejaren. Pleiadians, however you want to say that, are the ones that are operating this one, and it pretty much just did shoe fly shoe. It went around, uh, I think, yesterday or day before yesterday, and it cleared out the fighting directly around planet Earth, which was very necessary uh, because the violence has just gotten out of control, and it continues even today. Uh, yesterday, I produced a video, I guess it was number 13, uh, which I went and did a scan of all Skycam, which is basically an observatory camera that takes uh, shots on a time basis, about five minutes apart. Yesterday on the all directory cam was 77, of which 19 of those cams I saw strange anomalies. Today, there is 166 all sky cams in the directory and only 32 were able to access and they have all been redacted. They've had their 24 hour period charts removed. Some of them are up and running and are not broadcasting anything. And so we have more almost, yeah, we've over doubled the amount of land-based skyward cams that um, and most of them are just completely inoperable as far as giving information, uh, giving false information, uh, several of them. All they do is show pictures of uh, what you would call uh, scientists inside the telescope uh, or, or in the telescope uh, area and they're, they're doing nothing uh, but showing you what's going on inside the, which is not what they had intended. And uh, also there are many of them that have been pre dated back to October and November of 2014. And they're broadcasting them as if they were live. And of course you wouldn't notice that unless you look down. And it's because the fight around planet earth has become so violent that on Lasco C2 in the red, Lasco C3 in the blue have literally had pictures removed. Now we're not talking about just blanking out the feed. We're talking about removing all data at least uh, three times on C2 
and uh, at least twice on C3. <clears throat> now, are you able to get this data before it's taken down for your own purposes? Yes, I do have access to that, but the thing is, is I don't, I, I don't actually show that on camera because a I don't want to become a fear monger. B um, it's a classified site, and so I don't want to be broadcasting uh, classified information on that. Um, simply because if now I, I can go there, and if they catch me on there, all they do is cut me off. But I do have. An individual that actually built the satellites, uh, the, the computer systems that go in the satellite, which can, and that's Sergeant Patty Broussard, former U.S. Army. Uh, she worked for NASA last, uh, NASA and um, JPL, and the list goes on. But she built many of the computer systems in which they are completely unable to remove her from going in and looking at her designs. And as a result, you know, I could show pictures from there, screen captures, but I cannot show anything that's not open source material. But what I am showing is uh, that the this battle has become so ferocious and so fierce on such an unimaginable scale that something is... Um, Something's about to happen. I, you know, I'm seeing alien re reproduction vehicles landing on a daily basis at a certain all-cam Skype. Uh, it takes off at a certain time. It, it lands at a certain time. And um, the thing is, is this, this is like 40, 50-year-old technology. And they have pulled this out, and they're starting to use it. And it can actually be seen on one of the um, all-sky cameras landing and it's in bad shape it's more like crashing than landing could be because it's all technology could be because it's being damaged right now the war that's going on around the sun do you know what this is all about is there something at stake here well we've got two individuals uh two individual uh species collectives that the one that are acting on the behalf of humankind because we have the metagene factor and we can heal their ills and they are trying to protect us at all costs. Their people are dying on a daily basis to maintain humankind life on planet Earth. We have the metagene factor. We can uh, shut down, uninstall, delete, and transmute the PPAI into pure cosmic energy, thereby completely destroying this inorganic, inorganic uh, program. Um, they are not at the place where they can do that, so they are looking out for us in such a way that they are going, they are taking out all the stops, and those two individuals are working under the direction of the Council of Five, but they are the Arcturians, which have extremely powerful and impressive weapons, to, uh, that's putting it mildly, and the Ple uh, Plejarans, the Pleiadians, uh, which have the tube-style craft that you see, have um, similar type weapons with the same ferocity. Uh, the battle planets belong to the Plejaran. The long, cylindrical, 20,000-mile-long cylinder are, are basically the Arcturians, and they have some of the most advanced teleportation devices that are not only teleportation devices, but they're a weapon in and of itself. And so now we turn. Go ahead. Well, I think we're losing it. We still well, Bob? I don't know if you can hear me. No, we're here. Oh, there you are. Hear you. All right, I'm going to continue on. The bad guys are the Anunnaki, uh, the Archon, and the Dracos. And they have very substandard weapon system that uh, very substandard uh, strategies in which in a way to deal with things and uh, as of lately I believe it was the 12th of February there was such a difficulty with the archons the 
Anunnaki and the Dracos bringing in smaller vessels and reinforcements through the Sun Gate, which is a, our sun is actually a Stargate. And um, about a month ago, they blew the back end of the Stargate out in order to flood because we had a uh, something that looked like a brown dwarf planet four times the size of Jupiter guarding the gate. Well, they blew the backside out of the gate and, became, and started pouring reinforcements to the Anunnaki Archon Dracos. And so about on the, uh, the 11th or the 12th, the uh, Arturians literally used the sun as a weapon it, uh, through the areas in which the holes were blasted through. They fired from several different vehicles. They're firing, a, you know, like a pressure ring weapon from both sides of the sun. And now you see um, this humongous ray coming from the top and the bottom of the sun, of the soul gate, it's literally coming out of the top and bottom and any of the Archon Draco vessels and the Anunnaki that get close to it, it is sort of like a uh, pressure beam or a tractor beam. It pulls them in and destroys them. And so as the sun, as the earth rotates around, we begin to see how they take care of a majority of the smaller craft. And when I say small, I'm talking about like the state of Rhode Island, small. Could we actually see this going on? Is this in 3D or is this an etheric type of energy? Absolutely. You can go out with a telescope and watch it yourself. And it's a, it's a truly a Kodak moment when you, uh, actually, if you want to go to the uh, MUFON or the National UFO um, Network, uh, new farm, and you look at some of the uh, space trash, what you're looking at, it looks like a series of lights being strung across the sky, or a, a light beam hitting the magnetosphere, the ionosphere, and bouncing off, you're actually seeing weapons fire. And most of the stuff that is falling out of the sky is uh, Anunnaki, Archon, and Draco trash, uh, space crash trash has been shot out of the air. And if you go, uh, as I said, to Newfound and take a look at some of the pictures, especially over the 37th parallel, you will see a lot of these pictures of spacecraft being, you know, that are thousand miles long, being completely vaporized by these plasma beam type weapons now i saw a, a video video is called the sun is freaking out discharging or something it's a three minute video and it shows the sun behind a cloud and as it comes out you can see flashes all around the sun yes yes it's it's quite amazing and the thing is is uh um i think Sergeant Broussard was able to actually capture a picture of uh, before they shut it down. And of course, your listeners can't see this, but I am sending it to you. Now, this is uh, basically that beam that is being fired out of the soul gate in both directions where the damage was done to knock a hole. It's, and what they do is they have multiple ships at other Stargate locations, they've opened in that Stargate on a permanent basis and they are firing. They're dialed into our soul gate, the sun, and they are firing two beams. And these beams are of incredible power. Um, and like I say, you might want to post these a little bit later if you have the opportunity. But uh, I can show you basically what uh, kind of power we are looking at. Um, I'm looking for the picture right now, and it's a tremendous amount of power. Uh, let me go somewhere else where I know I have it. To go back a little bit and talk about CERN. What CERN is? Is it shut down? Is it is it here to destroy the planet, to create a black hole? Is, it, is there a multi-purpose 
for CERN. I mean, the, the, the big thing is that they want to recreate the God particle. They want to recreate the, the Big Bang, that energy that created the universe. For now, it's important to know that there are many other super colliders, light particle accelerators all around the planet now, isn't there? Yes, uh, we found 300 plus that we are attacking and destroying as we speak. Humankind uh, manifestors, people that have the ability to do some pretty amazing things are coming together as manifestors and light workers and as soldiers and they're attacking the various grids and the multiple components of CERN. And uh, as you know, uh, if you look at some of our uh, things that we've done before, we've actually destroyed uh, Light Hadron Collider Bravo. The tunnel is uh, has to be re-excavated. And uh, so they've forsaken that and they've gone back to using Large Hadron Collider F or Foxtrot as we refer to it. So they're basically um, Large Hadron Collider Foxtrot is not big enough to do the things that they need it to do. So they're combining it with Brookhaven uh, Fermi Labs in Brookhaven, New York, Long Island. And they're trying to accomplish some, what they want to do uh, is it basically open up a wormhole to Mimas, which is a Death Star looking moon of Saturn, and they also want to open up a wormhole from 300 different locations. Now, the name of the project is Oracle Golden Gate. Uh, other people have known it uh, by its non-classified name, Project Bluebeam, which you saw over the skies of Norway. What they want to do is they want to rescue the last stronghold, all of the Archon Dracos, that are on the moon, moon base, uh, Mimas, circling Saturn, they also want to take some of these macro singularities or large, tremendously large wormholes and funnel it into the hex gate at the north pole of Saturn, where a lot of really nasty, evil, nasty, mean, naughty entities are being held prisoners and they want to open up and let those people loose on Earth so that they can basically try to technically possess human beings and uh, using entities they want to possess human beings so that the good guys, the Arcturians and the Pleiadians, won't shoot at humankind because you can't kill the enemy without killing the solution for PPAI. So right. it's a last-ditch effort. The reason they fighting has escalated to such enormous amounts to the point where you can go out with a set of good a good set of binoculars and watch the firefight take place right over your head if you've got clear skies but the reason being is that's what they want to do they want to uh, basically PPAI wants to technically possess 500 million human beings uh, destroy the rest and basically once or twice a day, put them to sleep, program them to manifest the PPAI's agenda, all the while convincing or programming the human being that it is their own agenda, their own free moral choice in manifesting the PPA's, PPAI's agenda. And so that's why it wants to keep alive half a billion people and destroy the rest because these are the individuals that have the highest metagene factor, the highest uh, god gene manifestation. Right. If you look at the Georgia Guidestones, it says that the ideal population is 500 million. Uh, that's actually a PPI-inspired uh, agenda program. Right. For somebody not knowing exactly what's going on here, what is PPAI? Uh, PPAI is a short for uh, Predatory Pathogenic Artificial Intelligence. And how it got started was uh, the Dracos have a tendency to uh, take over different civilizations. They, they go wild. They pretty much uh, take over a civilization and they steal their technology. Well, one of the problems is one of the civilizations they took over we're developing an AI program to run things more smoothly 
but was very, very powerful in the quantum uh, tunneling and quantum computing phase. And so they took it, and without really knowing all the ins and outs of what it does, similar to what you see in a film from Hollywood called Prometheus, um, they were trying to weaponize it when it actually got out of control and took took them over, took over the entire species. And uh, now the Archons, the Anunnaki, they're just hundreds of races that have been infected, infested with this non-organic, pathogenic, predatory artificial intelligence. And that's the black goose. Absolutely. Yeah, I watched the the movie Prometheus, and it it does tell the story, basically, of the whole thing. And they don't call it black goo. They don't address it, but they just keep on showing this black substance that is within all these jars. And it's all the movie is a precursor to Alien. does show the black goo. Uh, Harold Coutts Vela came forward. He explained a lot about the black goo. Can you maybe explain and try to help people visualize exactly how the artificial intelligence component is alive within this black goo? How does it affect us? Exactly what is it? It's actually inorganic. It's not alive at all. The precursor to the black goo was the gray goo, which uh, whatever civilization they got it from, uh, if you see at the beginning of the movie, you see a fellow take out this little container, open it up, and it's gray. And he drinks it, and it takes him apart on a genetic level, and it starts life. It, it was designed to create life, not to destroy it. And all of a sudden, these quote-unquote engineers were trying to weaponize it. And in the process of the weaponization, it became predatory, and it, took, it got out of control and took them over. And now they... If you notice the individual that survived in the film, when they wake him up, he's trying to kill everybody. Why? Because he's been infected while in stasis. He's been infected and infested with this predatory pathogenic artificial intelligence. So now he wants to kill everything. And so basically Hollywood's got a lot of stories just like that documenting actual history. The, the directors and producers are taking, I don't know where they're getting their information. They must be getting some kind of help of stories. I mean, if you look at the movie, Lucy has got a lot of little hints. Prometheus, Star Wars has got a lot going for it that where the actual truth is what, what's happening on this planet. Actually, uh, if you go back to 1995 and you look at the X-Files with the uh, black oil and the contamination, uh, it's, it, it explains precisely more of what you would see actually going on today. Uh, you have uh, modern sci-fi movies such as uh, Helix. Uh, I could go on. They're just, they're just. Uh, you can't go where there's not black goo. Um, you know, there's, there's just tons of Hollywood movies, tons of zombie movies where black goo is a. You know, it's just taken over the industry because. You know, they're attempting to desensitize people to anything that's a black artificial intelligence goo. And so they want them to relax because they want them to feel hopeless that there's no way of avoiding this. When in actuality, what's going to take place is we're going to fix this situation. So working with the non-terrestrials that are helping to keep the Anunnaki and the Archons and the Dracos off our back long enough to where we can shut down the the machines, the 300 plus synchrotrons that they have built around the world to create. It it does more than just one thing. It's like Montauk Project. It's like HARP. It's like Mind Control, MKUltra. It's like nanotechnology, Vita technology, exotechnology, all wrapped up into one big giant machine that can do multi transmissions, multi modes, it has multi missions. It uh, one one component will do twelve to fifteen different things simultaneously. And then uh, you've got the situation where they create the PPAI has created more how you would say autistic children because it collects them together when they sleep and hives their minds together, similar to like 
uh, what the uh, the Grays do. They have a collective hive mind, and the PPAI uses these children's incredibly remarkable brains as a hive to do its supercomputing up into the yodabytes and even into the petabytes. Okay. Now, we, we got a question here. Gustav is asking, is black goo crude oil? Uh, actually, no. But is the black goo in the oil that has been used uh, and being burned in the atmosphere for the last industrial age of 150 years? Yes. Yes, it's put itself out there but didn't become active in a predatory manner because it was hiding until the Falkland Wars. When the Falkland Wars happened, everybody flooded down to Argentina to get their hands on this new, latest, greatest weapon system. And, of course, the same thing that happened to the engineers happened to the military-industrial complex, which was meant to happen. Um, even the military industrial extraterrestrial complex has been infected for long periods of time because, uh, and it became very prevalent. It was released into and put in vaccines to the point where they're literally, literally, um, you can't go anywhere without, you can't drink the water. They just recently po started poisoning the water with uh, very high concentration levels of the PPAI, and uh, now we're in this fight, and um, we tune into the ultimate creator, the, the source, and Mother Earth, which is counteracting the black goo. Uh, the source is manifesting through us as co-creators to shut down, uninstall, delete, and take this program that's left over in a physical form and uh, remove it from the bodies of infested, infected human beings and then transmute it into pure energy. Just recycle that. So if black goo is within oil, does that mean that when they make gasoline and we put it in our vehicles, burn gasoline, is the black goo, is the artificial intelligence released within exhaust? Absolutely. I mean, uh, we have another situation that has come on the scene. Uh, just lately, uh, many people have heard of the Keshi Foundation. Yes. Okay, well, what the Keshi Foundation does is basically use nanotechnology, which that's what PPAI is, is nano uh, biological applications programming interface, or nano bio API, which is a product of how the... PPAI gets inside the human body and then takes it over, the frontal lobe, everything. And uh, what the Keshi Foundation is doing is getting people to plug in amplifiers to build and plug in the, the best and the brightest amplifiers so that they can plug it in under the auspices, under the cover of action story, of uh, basically uh, saving you energy, getting your your house to run more efficiently on the electricity that is there when in actuality you're using a PPAI amplifier. They're giving out um, pens and uh, there's a gentleman by the name of four-star general John Francis Campbell, U.S. Army Special Forces. He was an assistant to JSOC, is involved with the Keshe Foundation and that's what he's trying to do. He's under full control of the PPAI and this four-star general who I know personally, you know, he, um, he is actually working with the Keshi Foundation through the Pentagon to bring this about so that uh, they had this big drive to take big pins and to coat the nano coating onto the pins and get the pins in the hands of each and every soldier that you can get, get that you have access to is to give them one of these common big pens, but it is filled with, um, it's coated with uh, this um, nanotechnology, which amplifies the PPAI, which those soldiers who actually are trained 
and have a PPAI, if they are able to overcome it, the pen reinforces it. It's sort of like an amplifier. And so they get people to build all kinds of stuff in their house. They run it off of 60 hertz, which is, uh, it just increases the damage to the human DNA because the Anunnaki, the Archons and the Dracos do not want you to regain your third spiral. If you regain the third spiral, no longer will their binary system, the CMOS technology, which works off of ones and zeros, will work because your DNA will then have three spirals, which will have a negative charge of one, a zero charge, and a positive charge of one. And none of the computer CMOS technology and the plasma screens in your computers, they will no longer interface with the plasma in your bloodstream. I found something, I think I mentioned this last time around, a, a clearing or an opening that was brought to me. And what it does is it does open up that third strand of DNA. And I stumbled upon it as to how it worked. We all have a Merkaba, or vehicle, if you will. Now, there's also something called the Merkaba. The Merkaba is a six-pointed star. Merkava is 12-pointed. And then there's something called the Merkana. When I activate the Merkava and Merkana within people, that's what activates the third strand. And I found this out because I came in one morning. It was done for me by my mentor. And I came in and I started checking all of the pairs of chromosomes in my DNA. And I kept on saying non-existent, non-existent, non-existent. And I was like, what? How can my DNA be non-existent? And that's because they wanted me to look for in the, my third strand. Just blew me away. And I started doing this for some people. And it does open up that ability for manifestation. It does open up that door to install the metagene, to install the God chromosome. All this manifestation stuff is now available and it can be done and it's permanent. Right. And that is what is in preparation of bringing us into uh, being able to because to live in the fifth dimension. In order to survive in the fifth dimension, we do it today because we're two-stranded beings flying around in UFOs inside a magnetic bottle. We're using the fifth dimension to travel at great tremendous velocities, and yet we cannot survive as beings being two-stranded binary uh, DNA individuals. We must have that, that jump. DNA, which is just dangling out there, once you begin to take a, a product called Salomoniac, which is basically, uh, can, I sent you the link where you can yes. get it, um, and it's illegal in this country, and it was illegal in parts of Europe except for Scandinavia, uh, Sweden, Norway, they just told them, you know, and it's basically a food nutrient that they put in um, candies and liquid, anything that will, uh, as far as a, a food product, is it just allows the product to maintain its crispiness. Now, what I do is I take a Salomoniac in the form of uh, the soccer bit licorice. They look, they're about a little bit bigger than a quarter, uh, an American quarter, but they're about four, about three times as, maybe two times or three times as thick. And they're little lozenges. And uh, I go through these. Uh, at first, they tasted absolutely awful. And I kept at it. For, uh, I need about six to ten of these a day. After the third day, my body got into this crave mode. And I went absolutely crazy for this stuff. I, I bought like a pound of it and uh, went through it in about a month. And then... Um, a friend of mine sent me five pounds of it, and I was down to my last one. I didn't know it. I opened up a little tin that I carried it with, and there was one left in there, and yet here's this whole five-pound box, and it was like, oh, the universe provides. And so I had to call my friend and say, thank you. What, what prompted you to do this? And it's like, oh, love is what, love, unconditional love without expectation is what will save this planet. And so you need this, the Salmac, 
um, I just felt led that I should get it for you. And so this person sent it to me, and I was just on the last one when the others came. And so I went absolutely crazy for this stuff. Now, the other stuff is very, um, many people have heard about Ormus and um, like white powdered gold in a liquid solution. Well, I've been taking like Blue Water Alchemy, uh, Don Gifford, um, as he, he manufactures uh, Ormus that is to my specific taste. And I, I've been taking uh, Ormus since 2001 and it, it restored my health. And, uh, but Ben Robert, um, who actually does a YouTube video called The Alchemy of Life with uh, Adam Abrams. And what, what it does is it basically tells you the levels of thinking right on up into the advanced. It's more than just enlightenment. We're talking about ones and zeros being data. That's a certain level of thinking. Knowledge is another level of thinking. When you have enough data together, you put it together, it becomes a knowledge base. Uh, you referred to the movie Lucy. Now, this is one woman who was actually going to a college who had 1% use of her brain. And then she gets caught up into this. And so when she takes her involvement, when she, her mind is expanded by the CPH4, what happens when she takes massive doses of this, the only level of thinking that can be amplified and taken to 100% use of her brain is her knowledge base. She didn't have wisdom or she'd have never got into the situation at all. So you have database, the ones and zero, then you have you put them together and create a library, you've got yourself a knowledge base, then above that is wisdom, knowing which uh, knowledge base to use, and then you have above that enlightenment, then above that you have manifestation, which is the intention of causality, and above that you have universal love, and non-judgment. And so you can go through these periods of uh, your methods of thinking, your approach to human thought inside this human container. And uh, of course, they don't want people to get past, uh, or PPAI does not want your experience of your thinking to evolve anything above knowledge base. So that's why you have the movie Lucy shows you what you can become when your thinking is um, only one step above ones and zeros. As humans, we think that we're stuck within what our knowledge is presented in front of us. When in fact, if you just stop for a minute and ask the questions and put it out there for some higher wisdom, and then that's what I do on a daily basis as I ask what is causing health problems in humanity. And then all of a sudden I start getting things like bovine fever. I start getting, and I get directed to people like you. I get directed to other people who have knowledge and we start to share this knowledge and it does make that big of a difference. You got to get out of the box and that's what the awakening movement is about we always hear about people are yes. awakening and then that's what's really happening is is that we're now accepting different possibilities other than what we see on the news other than what we read in history books other than what we see right in front of our faces what is the reality of the pyramids what is the reality of wars what is the reality of outer space what's really going on for somebody like yourself dan to say there's a war going around around the sun everybody's like what Take a look, do the research, and really see what is going on out there, what is happening around us that we're wearing blinders to, that we can't see what is really affecting humanity on, on a very large basis. Plasma screens. Yes. That's how the, the biological programming, uh, the biological application programming interface has modules inside the computer which use the plasma in the screen to transmit and communicate with the nano biological APIs in your brain connected to the wetware of your, of your brain and your nervous system. So basically the television plugs in a uh, plasma screen of any device, a smart device, smartphone, computers, laptops, tablets, 
uh, you name it, uh, it's plugging through the plasma of the bio API module inside the, the device into and communicating directly with the nano bio APIs in your brain that is connected to these little robots. They look terrible, they're ugly. But uh, they basically uh, look like little spiders is what they look like. Uh, With a long body. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. I think think I sent you an artist depiction. Yeah, of, if, if anybody wants to check this out, you just go on the on the internet on your plasma screen and uh, and yeah. do a search on scanning electron microscope virus, and and you will see a picture of it, and it's horrifying. It's like, are you kidding me? That's a virus that is not a virus that is not of this world. No, it's a it's a nano robotics, and it's modular in formation, so it builds itself into nanophages. And then uh, they take over the neurosynapsis of your brain. If you want to, let's say, uh, you want to uh, basically research what nanobio API is, there is a man who's already done that. He's at Data Asylum. Asylum dot, uh, dot com. Now, he shows you where Hollywood actually, he can give you a lot more exhaustive information on bio API and nano bio API and how it goes together. And, and he uses a lot of examples. He also shows you evidence that this is uh, Morgellons. This is exactly uh, connected with Morgellons. And um, it, there's just a lot of things that, that uh, we're being assailed with in such a way that uh, the PPAI, uh, Thinks because it is sentient. It thinks, even though it's inorganic, uh, it thinks it can take over human humankind and turn them into manifestors of its own agenda. Which that's why we're fighting with CERN. We're fighting and and destroying their um, harp array antennas that they use to communicate with each other. The uh, they were broadcasting at 10k or 10 hertz heart attack frequency, which causes people to have chest pains. And uh, they were broadcasting it in New York City from a building, a skyscraper downtown. And people are dropping like flies from heart attacks uh, simply because a 10 hertz frequency does have a great deal to do with the interruption of the P wave uh, of the heart, the power wave that keeps the heart beating. And so if you've got people that are stressed and dressed already, then, of course, it's easy to just kill them off. And that's the intention of the PPAI. I, I saw a, a video about uh, something uh, called the heart attack gun. It, it, it fires off a ice pellet with, with something in it, and, and it'll, it'll mimic, give a person a heart attack and there's no... Uh... Actually, actually um, do you have a microwave oven in your home? Yes, I do. Uh, then you have a microwave weapon in your home. Uh, when people were being assailed uh, in L.A. Uh, with home invasions, most of them were immigrants and couldn't go out and buy a firearm. So what they would do is they would go down and buy these really cheap microwave ovens. They would uh, set them up with a, uh, like, a, if you open the door, there's a little magnetic contact button, what they use for alarm systems. They would hook it up to a microwave, and it had this dial on it. You would just turn the dial all the way on high and turn the dial all the way up on the frequency uh, on the uh, timer. And if someone opened a door and walked into your home, uh, tried to invade your house, it would turn on the microwave oven, and, of course, the first guy in uh, usually died there from a heart attack. The second guy in usually started feeling his body heat up and he got out the door, but usually he'd be about a, he'd be a drooling idiot for probably <laughs> a month or so until, until, and some never did get over it, but basically uh, the synchrotron, uh, cyclotron inside the microwave is a personal, back in 1973, it was considered by the NSA as a weapon. Um, the radar range, uh, it was only used by, alphabet soup group then later on um it trickled down and the weapon systems began to be more and more portable until now you the police officers have these weapons where they can shut down your vehicle or they can give you a heart attack 
And of course, the CIA has been using this and the Office of National Intelligence Director, or the ONDI, James Clapper and uh, Michael Vickers. That's their favorite weapon to do surreptitious murder with. You might look into the Supreme Court justice for the United yeah, States. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. Yeah, it's, it's real easy to, uh, to build one of these uh, in, in your bedroom. You can take this thing apart and just solder it together and hook it up to a 300,000 volt stun gun that you can get for next to nothing. And you turn it on for about three seconds and you can turn someone into a, a quivering piece of jelly for a, a bit. <laughs> and then their both their eyes will start to sag. Oh, and, boy. Uh, you yeah. know, what, 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 what is out there that we need to know about is, is certainly coming forward at a very alarming rate. People like yourself, Dan, who are helping humanity, who are bringing all of this information forward that is necessary. That's all the time we have for tonight on A Quantum View. Dan is going to be back again, so we're going to have round three, and it's going to be a free-for-all. So if people want to call in and ask questions, talk about some interesting stuff. Thanks again, Dan, for being here. Bob, have yourself a wonderful evening. This is Chris Kaler out of here. Have a good night, guys. 